Good morning. Good Saturday morning, August 2nd, 2014. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. Welcome to another segment. Today we're going to discuss the 50 things you can do to stay clean and sober. Before I go into that, let me just go over my contact information. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. You can reach me at my email at ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. You can also go to my website, which is filled with tons of information about alcohol and or drug addictions, and that's at www.clearviews.info. At C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. You can also go to Facebook, and I have clearviews.info page there. Let's jump right into it. These are the 50 things that you and I can do to, clay, to, to stay clean and sober. Number one is we need to go, in the beginning for the first couple months, we need to go one day at a time. That's 24 hours at a time. We cannot pre-plan tomorrow, we can't pre-plan next week. That is really just for the first few months. As you get stronger in your recovery, you will actually be able to plan and uh, make make plans for next week and, and uh, go further than the 24-hour detail plan that I'm advising for the first uh, couple months now. So, but for the first couple months, let's do 24 hours at a time. Don't ever, ever underestimate your addiction. That addiction will creep up out of nowhere and suck you right back in there so you you need to keep your guard up you need to be careful because you can never underestimate a deduction uh, an addiction you need to completely not do drugs or or drink alcohol zero you can't just say okay I'm gonna slow down and just have one or two it's either you're going to be addicted and you want to live the life of an alcoholic, and you want to live the life of a, a, a person full of drugs, or you seek the treatment that I'm advising, and you stay away from it completely, 100%. Number four, you need to seek treatment. There are different methods of treatment, which we will go back, uh, go into in a little while from now. We've discussed in previous videos, uh, but we're not going to do that right now. There are different methods, so we need to seek treatments. Number five is you need to take physical care of yourself. Go running, work out. Don't just sit back and uh, just because you're saying, well, I, I'm giving up the drinking and the, and the drugs, you just sit back and become lazy. You need to keep physically active. Number six is you need to cut out all toxic relationships. And what that means is people that are around you that are a bad influence for you and it can be people as close as your relationships your uh, intimate relationships your family relationships you need to cut those people out because they are a bad influence for you and um, you need to just eliminate them so now that you cut those people out number seven is to build new relationships meet new people build a whole new life for yourself Number eight is reconnect with friends and relatives. Now, why do I say reconnect? Where, where'd they go? Well, because of your alcoholism and your addiction, you might have lost some friends and relatives because of your attitude, because of your, uh, the way you carried on about yourself. Just everything about uh, someone with addiction sometimes can turn a loved one or a friend away. So reconnect with those people. Don't mistake enthusiasm with actual action yeah I quit today that's it I quit today and I'm done now you need to act you need to show yourself not as much as show others but show yourself that you really mean it that you are going to take your life back you're going to retrieve your life from addiction and you're going to learn to live with it Number nine, uh, excuse me, number ten, reach out to others in recovery. Like I'm reaching out to you, you need to reach out to others, and that could be including me. So you need to stay proactive in people 
uh, that have some sort of addiction and, were, and are going through recovery. Of course, I don't mean to reach out to people that are drinking every day, doing drugs every day, because that would be a bad situation to get yourself into. Number 11, you are responsible for your own sobriety. You can seek advice from other people, but you are responsible for your own sobriety. So don't feel that everyone around you owes to take care of you during your sobriety because you ultimately have to take full responsibility for your sobriety. As much as you are responsible for your, uh, uh, not for the addiction itself, but for letting yourself be sucked in by addiction and not seeking help earlier. So as much as you're responsible for not seeking help, now that you are in recovery, you are responsible for your own sobriety. So keep that in mind. Number 12, and this is an important one for me because when I first uh, became sober, June 22nd, 2013, I went to AA on, during a couple meetings, and everybody had the answer how I can help myself. But you know what? Do what works for you. Because the ultimate end result is for you not to do drugs, for you not to drink, and for you to continue sobriety. So whatever works for you, within limits, of course it means not breaking the law or whatever, but whatever works for you, that's what you need to do. At the same time, don't kid yourself. Don't make some sort of plan that's totally unachievable so don't kid yourself so whatever it does work for you do it but within reason number 13 at the same time make sure that you're also not lying to yourself so when you're making these recovery uh, plans make sure that you're not lying to yourself because uh, it, it has to work it really does number 14 is you need to forgive others mind you during your drunken stages and your addicted stages people probably got turned off by you, might have said things that were um, hurtful at the time. Truthful? Probably, but hurtful. Learn to forgive them, because when you forgive a person, you can move on, and, and it brings down the stress level in you. So learn to forgive. You need to also, that this is number 15, you need to move past the self-pity. Yes, you have an addiction issue. Yes, it's, it's caused major problems in your life, but guess what? Here's the, here is the light at the end of the tunnel. You are going through sobriety. You can continuously go through sobriety as long as you want to do it. You need to set your mind and you need to do it. So stop the pity party. Today, if it's your first day, is the first day of your new life. Number 16, heighten your self-awareness. Make sure that you know everything that's around you and what you're doing and, and uh, don't let yourself uh, slide into some sort of um, old way again. So you need to self-heighten your self-awareness. You need to keep busy. That's number 17. Keep busy. My videos keep me busy. My job keeps me busy. Spending time with my wife keeps me busy. Simple little things such as possibly just going yard sale shopping with my wife keeps me busy. Anything to keep your mind off your addiction is keeping busy. The worst thing to do is to sit alone in a room and start thinking of the good old days because those good old days are gone and those good old days almost killed you. Think about today. If it's a brand new uh, sobriety for you, of course you're only going to think about today and then not worry about tomorrow, but as time goes on and you mature in sobriety, then you will then think about tomorrow a lot more. Number 18, learn to have fun without alcohol. We just spoke about going to yard sales, that's fun without alcohol. Uh, going, spending time with your family is fun without alcohol. Going fishing is fun without alcohol. Alcohol didn't make uh, give you the fun. It was the intoxication. The drugs made you high. That's what made fun because you escaped reality. So learn to live not only without alcohol and drugs but also learn to have fun without them. Number 19 learn to talk to your loved ones. It 
There is no reason to be ashamed of your situation. I'm not saying at a Sunday dinner, just show up and, and sit down and then bring up your alcoholism, bring up your drug addiction. No, of course not. But when people make a compliment or give you a compliment saying how good you look and, and how things are looking better for you, explain to them the process that you're going through. Explain to them that things are becoming better. And believe me, people accept that. So that was number 19. Number 20, develop a support network. Me, my support network is not only myself and my loved ones, but it's also you watching, because you are supporting me by watching me. So those are many ways of uh, coming up with a support network. You might utilize AA as your support network. You might utilize a rehab center as your uh, support network. You might utilize me. You might utilize uh, church. We all should utilize God as our support network because it is God who created us and wants only the best for us. Number 21, take long walks. Not only is it good for your physical uh, aspects, but it's also good for your mind. It gives you a chance to think alone, not surrounded by people talking, TVs on, radios on, etc. Take those long walks. Number 22, take up an artistic hobby, meaning painting, sculpturing, whatever artistic hobby that you used to enjoy doing or maybe you are interested in doing now, take one up. That will keep you busy also. Number 23, take up an outdoor hobby, such as playing soccer, fishing, horseback riding, my case in the winter ice hockey, soccer in the summer for me take those up number uh, 24 take up a social hobby social hobby could be many of other things it could be just a uh, uh, youth group um, helping out at youth group helping out during summer camps uh, going out uh, going into possibly a nursing home spending time with older people uh, going to jail, speaking about sobriety. Those are all social hobbies. Number 25, um, I'm sorry, is take up an old hobby. An old hobby is something that used to do in the past. Bring that past back into your mind now because it will make you feel so much better. So take up an old hobby that you had. Number 26 is one that I am constantly doing and that is to be grateful. I am so grateful that I have made it from June 22nd, 2013 to August 2nd, 2014 without any slip-ups, without any relapses and I'm very grateful that. I'm also grateful that I have a loving wife. I'm grateful we have children. I'm grateful for a lot of things in my life. I am grateful to be alive. So you need to be grateful. Number 27 Join an online recovery forum. They have them online. They have an AA online. Uh, I'm online just about every day. Not just about. I am online every day. I'm online on Facebook every day. So you can join an online recovery form, uh, forum. Number 28 is to go back to school for that unfinished education that you weren't able to do. Maybe it was a financial issue. It still might be a financial issue. Maybe it's also because you couldn't think straight. Why was that? Because we all somehow have an alcohol or and drug addiction. So now that our minds are becoming clearer, maybe we do want to go back to school. And if it is if it is a financial issue, there is so many programs out there to help you with that. So go back to school. Number 29, improve your job skills. When we were whether it being in the past or right now when we worked and we were under the influence of drugs and alcohol, we were moody, we didn't give our employer 100% of ourselves and we weren't thinking clearly. So now you are thinking clearly, you're not as moody anymore. Give your employer what he or she hired you for and that is you. That is not the drugs, that is not the addiction, that is not the alcohol, it is you. So improve on your skills. Now is the time to do that. Number 30, go to the library. First of all, it's for free. What do you have at the library? You have computer access, you have books, you have uh, movies, DVDs, 
you have so many different things old newspapers magazines so go to the library it's for free number 31 spend more time with your family that's an important one why is that because it is you and your family that need each other you support each other during your worst crisis your family is there for you and then when they go through a crisis and it might not be alcohol or drug addiction it could be anything else you need to be there for them so spend more time with your family and I say this so often that each and every day is a gift from God to be here one day whether it's you me or our family someone won't be here so enjoy the days that you do have on earth with your family number 32 avoid old hangouts what does that mean it means don't go to the bars you used to hang around with don't go to the corners by the deli where they were dealing drugs so you have that opportunity and that temptation to buy some again stay away from old hangouts because old hangouts give you continuous problems again with alcohol and or drug addiction so avoid them number 33 make a to-do list my to-do list for this video today August 2nd 2013 uh, 14 I'm sorry came in the middle of the night I had some pretty bad dreams uh, my next video is going to actually address one of the dreams and that dream was um, we were in the car me and my wife and someone else I don't want to mention a name and that one other person took control of the car and started running into buildings I know it's just a dream it sounds crazy but my wife ended up being killed in this particular dream and in this dream the first thing I did was go back to alcohol and uh, so my next video is going to concentrate on what do we do when we face tragedy in life to continuously stay sober because that dream really was an eye-opener but also during the evening I thought about uh, uh, 50 things to make your life better clean and sober 50 things to do to continuously keep clean and sober so that's why I'm doing this video today and it's that simple that is a to-do list my to-do list uh, for my job is to create a different lab uh, to come up with new machines uh, for you know for doing the eyeglasses and stuff so these are to-do lists so do a to-do to list say that 10 times quick number 34 you need to do some traveling first thing people are going to say is well I don't have money to travel and you know what it is expensive to travel do a simple very inexpensive uh, co uh, cost factor travel situation and that is camping for people on Long Island there are many campsites for people in Florida many campsites all over the world there are campsites that is so good but do yourself a favor when you do go camping don't bring internet service with your cell phones go camping just the old-fashioned way a flashlight and a tent okay number 35 you need to form productive habits what is a productive habit productive habit would be to take the long walks to do to-do lists those are productive habits unproductive habits would be to drink again and do drugs again see the difference so productive habits number 36 leave your comfort zone you need to leave your comfort zone my comfort zone used to be with a shot of vodka in my hand and sipping it down now I have many other comfort zones sitting in front of a camera is becoming more comfortable for me so leave your comfort zones from the past and start new comfort zones number 37 this doesn't reflect me hopefully it doesn't reflect you but quit smoking yesterday's video we addressed about people uh, dying of cancer uh, it's not just from smoking cigarettes but also smoking uh, marijuana and I believe it's a huge number here in the United States alone so quit smoking uh, it is a bad habit and um, it's not good for you number 38 create the life you want leave the old life behind that life is gone starting today if today is your first day of sobriety or going back to a month ago or in my case June 22nd 2013 
create the life you want my life to that I want to create and continuously to create is to be so active in sobriety and so active in educating other people on how to live a sober and clean life that that's what I'm creating I am now contemplating going back to school and my calling although I am in the optical field and have been doing that for 30 years I think my calling now is to become a substance abuse counselor so that is a new life that I want to create for me what is yours number 39 stop with the excuses nobody should hear them nor do they want to hear them you are responsible for your own actions fix them move on stop with the excuses please because honestly it's it's a it's an old story we want to create a new life okay stop blaming others number 40 it's your fault yes you were born with an addiction but you know what there are ways to live with it so stop blaming everybody around you because it's not them it's you they probably have their own addictions of some sort they just don't show it but stop blaming others number 41 be humble always be willing to learn something always be willing to listen to other people and be humble because it, it, it it's such a pleasant thing to have reconnect number 42 reconnect with your religious roots growing up every Sunday was church for me I'm sure it was for you as well and as time goes on and addictions come and go in our lives church fades away reconnect with that I've said this before and I'll say it again God created you just the way you are when God created you he didn't create the addictions that came from the devil side so continuously live how God created you because no matter which way you look at it God created you to be special and yes you are special you are perfect the way you are we just need to fine-tune what is ailing us and some of these things that I just went through will help you lead a clean and sober life so reconnect with those religious roots whether it's going to church whether you want to watch TV and watch the Sunday morning church services please just reconnect number 43 give back to the community my way of giving back to the community is to help others even before I became sober I started giving back to community with a uh, food drive in a local church to go out there and try to help the homeless uh, my wife and I we donated a few dollars here and there and sometimes some merchandise to homeless or handicaps uh, I have two handicapped sisters uh, my wife she works with handicaps so we're very proactive with the less fortunate uh, and uh, mentally and physically challenged individuals in this life uh, so that is another way to reconnect with the community and now my calling is, is to, to testify about sobriety and addictions and that is my way of giving back to the community. What is your way? Think about it. What can you give back to the community? Number 44, avoid vices. Just because you've been, you kicked your alcohol and addiction doesn't mean that addiction won't still creep up behind and nip you in the bud so avoid that keep your guard up don't relax too much number 45 don't get complacent always keep moving forward in personal growth don't just say okay Ralph I'm sober today I beat my addiction or I'm gonna live with my addiction that's it and then kinda of walk down that path and don't practice it you need to move forward you need to educate yourself you need to read up you need to constantly do and by doing what I'm doing right now by helping you is constantly refreshing my memory on my addiction so try different methods and by all means you can call me at 631-599-0218 and we can discuss it together you can even help me I'd be more than happy to branch out my personal videos my personal articles and all that to other people to help to spread the word almost like the diamond uh, pyramid effect 
we can do that together. But you have to want to do it because it's in your heart to do it, not because it's just something to do. Number 46, discover your true passion. The only way to discover true passions is to try new things. Try new things. Try doing a video. Sit in front of a video and talk about sobriety. Talk about drug addiction. If you folks go and look at my first video, it was a, a train wreck because I never sit in front of cameras. And each and every day, the more I do, the easier it becomes. I don't stutter as much. I don't make gum chatting noises. So that's something you try. You can also just, like I said, go into uh, the YMCA and, and you know testify about your sobriety. Educate other people on what you're going through because that's exactly what I'm doing. Is I'm telling you what I'm going through daily, what I have been going through for over a year now. That is helping others. Number 47. If you know what your true passion is, pursue it. My passion right now is to pursue an education in a substance abuse counseling. I want to pursue that. It might take me a few years to complete it, but in the meantime, I want to do it. There are a couple reasons I want to do it. A is because I truly feel that I have a calling from whoever. It could be from God, it could be from myself, but I truly believe it's God calling me to go out and help others. Because I can speak from a lot of experience. I'm a, a, a personable person and I just feel that that's what I need to do. So that that is what I want to do. I've spent 30 years in the optical business and it's time for a change for me. Now, my goal of course is to make money in life but I will accept doing what I'm doing at no cost, no money coming back to me because it is my calling because I want the world, I want everyone to, to feel what I'm feeling which is total excitement on sobriety, total excitement living with addiction, dealing with addiction, taking addiction head on and saying you are not going to take me, you are not taking my life over, I will fight. So that is one thing. Number 48, take pride and responsibility. You are responsible for your actions, so take pride in that. Sometimes we make big, bad choices in life. You will probably still make bad choices. I do all the time. But take responsibility. It goes back to one of the other things we spoke about. Don't blame others. You are truly responsible for yourself, so take responsibility. Number 49, don't live in fear. Just because you're an alcoholic or you have an addiction does not make you have to walk through life in eggshell, on eggshells. Don't live in fear. Tackle it head, head on. Know that you are more powerful for, than any addiction in the world and that you have the tools, whether you have them in front of you or you can get them, to fight. Number 50, and this is probably the most important one, Number 50 is if you do relapse, don't slip back into the old abuse. Get up, dust your knees, pull yourself up, and move on. Because if you go back to the old abuse, you will get the old results. There are people that will have relapses. I, before June 22, 2013, had many relapses. We discussed this and I'll say it again. Hitting rock bottom usually is the last time you'll have a relapse. You might have so many tries before hitting rock bottom thinking you're hitting rock bottom but you haven't yet. Don't fall into that. So now we went over the 50 things to help you keep clean and sober. Let's talk about really quickly, we're up to 30 minutes already, let's talk about the methods. My method, as everybody knows, videotapes, my website, which has many different things on it. It has uh, articles, videos, um, newspaper clippings. These are all by doctors, professionals, psychiatrists, psychologists. They're not by me. There are There is some items on there, like all my videos are by me, but the professionals are the ones that dispense the medical treatment and medical advice. I don't. 
What I do is I relay that message to you. Then you have AA. AA is great. I do want to just say this about AA, and uh, this is only something I observed this morning at 3 o'clock in the morning on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, and this poor young lady is saying, why is it that she always falls back into the alcohol routine? And the next person made a comment that really disturbed me. And that person's comment indirectly was, stop with your complaining. I think you're just trying to draw attention. Get off the Facebook. Now that, to me, is not helping another person. Let's just say if this person is looking for attention, and that's what, why would this person talk about alcoholism to get attention? There are a million other ways to get attention. Why would they bring up the alcoholism? My methods show compassion. My methods show an ear to listen. My ears are always open for you. I'm not saying all AA is bad because I'm, it, it works for millions of people, but that particular situation at 3 o'clock this morning on Facebook, I found to be the most irresponsible remark to make to someone that is suffering from alcoholism. Now you also have the third method, which is um, rehab centers and treatment centers. I usually suggest a 30, 60, 90 day program for people that A, have no self-control. Because if you are afraid to be in a room near a refrigerator for the alcohol or near a drawer for the joints, and you're afraid that because nobody's watching you that you're going to do it, you need to check into a 24-7 rehab center. As I always say, God is here. God created you. God will help you. Please turn to God. Your higher power is there listening, waiting, but you need to do that. So we address those three uh, methods, and there are many more methods, YMCA, Knights of Columbus, tons of different methods. Those are the three most common ones that I uh, pretty much every day talk about. My contact information again is ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com, that's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. My website www.clearviews.info that's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O then you have my Facebook clearviews.info page you can call my business number which I'm the only person that has access to that phone that's 844-393-9355 I hope today with these 50 sample um, things that I gave you on how to live with a clean and sober life, things that you need to really practice every day if you can. I mean, it's a lot, 50. I hope it was beneficial for you. Like I said, my next video coming up, whenever that might be, hopefully Monday or Tuesday, is about that dream that I had. And folks, when you have dreams like that, sometimes it's a red flag, it's an eye-opener. And uh, I started thinking, God forbid if somebody that I truly love should pass away. How would I react? What would I do? Hopefully not like the, the dream was showing me to go right back to drinking because that's not the answer. So my video to you folks on the next one, uh, the next video, is going to be how to deal with tragedy and disappointment in your life while addicted to alcohol and drugs. So that's what we're going to do on the, during the next video. I hope to God that we see each other real soon again. Here in New York, in the Hamptons, it is a rainy Saturday. I hope wherever you are, you have sunshine. I hope you have a great weekend. But most importantly, I hope you have a sober weekend. Stay sober. See you soon. And God bless you.